hold your light, you hold the power to um, set the tone for the frequency, the energy of the entire space you're in. And that is powerful because then you can be a lighthouse to feed the people around you and raise their consciousness, raise their energy so that we can experience love and peace and not so much, mm -hmm. you know, the frequencies of judgment, competition, greed, you know, fear, anger, hatred, all that. That's very real. And so I think what's going on is back to this, like you can plug into, if you acknowledge what is, yeah, it's going to trigger a part of your personality or your ego, and it's going to bring you into fear. But yeah. that's what the dark beings on the planet want. Then they win. So instead you say, cancel, not going there. Don't speak that language. I'm not playing that game. I'm in agreement with light and love, source energy. I work for light. That's all. You bring your, you call your energy back from a, mm -hmm. a, the situation, from the person, whatever it is, you call your energy back. Because we, what I, Spirit has taught me is we always have the power to choose, to choose if we align with light and love or fear and shadow. That's our choice. And the minute you wake up and you recognize, wait, I'm slipping into fear or ego or shadow, that's all it takes. Then you have the power to call it back and to get plugged into source again. So, and I, I would just put this out there, an energy healer I work with taught me, and it's helped me so much the last couple of years with all the, the stuff we've gone through, is that when, when I catch myself, just start doing a mantra over and over and over, whatever that mantra is. What I was taught is the divinity within me. And I just say it over and over, the divinity within me, because that is calling my light, my power back to that divine spark that is within me, that is me. So you can switch it on that quickly. Yeah, you absolutely can. So, and even in readings, like I, mm. again, only work with light. And so if I somehow feel like I got triggered in a reading and I get disconnected and I start to feel something less than light and love, I can mm -hmm. just come back to wait, nope, time out. It, intention is everything. This is what I learned a long time ago. And it's so powerful. Energy follows intention. So as long, you don't even have to know what you're doing as long as your intention is pure, right? I like, I have yeah. pretty much taught myself how to do mediumship. And, you know, I had a few tr uh, teachers, great teachers along the way, but it, at the end of the day, I would say my teachers have been my guides, my team and spirit. Mm. And, you know, it's always about coming back to intention. And from there, energy flows, follows intention. And spirit, in a sense, will lead you along the highest timeline or high path that's for highest and best for you and for all involved. So how do you bring that energy? Like just talking about, you know, going into a room of people that you're connected with, you're, you're going to feel the energy a lot more than just strangers, usually not, not always, but you know, you're, you're more empathic to it. Right. How do you, how do you keep that energy strong? Because, you know, the frequencies can be off. We can be butting heads, like holding that light to raise it. It can be triggering for someone that's not on that frequency for you. Like, how do you remain higher? Because I feel like it's a lot easier sometimes to be like, mm -hmm. find yourself going down than to raise people up. You know, it's a lot easier to go down the mountain than climb up it. Yeah, that's right. Um, something I learned to do is rather than just protect myself walking into it, I have learned you want to dominate the energy or vibration in the room. So you project yourself. So what mm. you do is, you know, and you can line this up, meditate on it before you walk into the room or the situation, or you can do it there and you can do both. But what you do is yeah. you breathe down into the core of your being, into your solar plexus. You really get grunt. That's your p point of power and will and confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you breathe. And I imagine drawing down from source energy, gold light, because gold mm -hmm. vibrates at the frequency of divine truth and all love. And you, you imagine a golden sun from your being radiating out, just beaming mm -hmm. light. It's like love bombing and light bombing everybody. <laughs> and you just, you really cast it out because then if you're, you can't send and receive energy at the same time. So if you're sending that protects mm. you because light always conquers darkness. Okay. And when I say darkness, I mean, sometimes people are good people, but they're in judgment, right? Yeah. They're sitting there mentally judging you. You're right, mm -hmm. wrong, good, bad, positive, negative, whatever it is. And as an empath, you can really feel that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always feel good. 
and and so you want and, and sometimes it's competition people are trying to one up you that's just part of the ego and so yeah. instead of us judging them like you don't want to be brought down into judgment instead you want to find compassion and forgiveness like th that's okay I, I get it they're in their unconscious self right i'm not going to take this personally so if i start to feel because I am super sensitive and it is hard for me to be in like big dominating energy, like crowds yes. and especially neg yeah. negative ones. But I have learned, I have to be, I'm a spiritual being having this human experience. I've had to learn mm -hmm. how to function, to show up, to live a normal life. And so that's what I do. I go into mm -hmm. projecting, projecting light and love. And it does seem to help, but there's so many spiritual tools that that doesn't resonate with your listeners. You know, there's so many more that you can use, but that's one example. I'm almost imagining it as you're describing it, like a Care Bear, you know, <laughs> like the Care Bear shutting their like light out of their little belly. It's just like love, love, love. And it sounds silly, but like it helps those visualizations do help. But yeah, I mean, I mean going into groups, it's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to like manage your energy, especially when you're coming up against, like you said, there's that judgment, but like, it's even hard, I think, to come at things with that compassion and understanding without being almost judgmental too. Cause there's can be a judgment about that. Like, right. Oh, I get it. I get that you're there. You know, like you're not on this level as me. Like we have to find a way to balance that where we can come at it with like pure compassion pure love. Like what is that yeah. genuine energy? And that's something I've said before is energy doesn't lie. We can't just say, oh, I feel you or I'm compassionate. We actually have to embody that. So how do we embody that true nature of that love and compassion? Well, that takes practice. I mean, that ultimately we're all on this journey working to embody. Um, mm -hmm. And that is the sign of a, a fully self-actualized being. And, you know, that mm -hmm. might take lifetimes, but as long as, you know, spirit doesn't judge us on where we're at. It's our intention to show up to do and be our best self each day. And that's, you know, where I was 10 years ago, you know, I didn't have yeah. the wisdom I have today. And so you have to have compassion. And so really it's about being accountable. Like I mm -hmm. notice when I go into judgment, I'm like, wait, time out. Who am I to judge? Cancel, yes. cancel. So it's a practice. And then coming back to, okay, I wish to see through the lens of love. Spirit, show me this person or show me the situation through divine eyes, okay, rather than through the lens of fear, which is, again, judgment and all the other things. So it's really, it, it's like becomes a habit. And the more you mm -hmm. catch yourself, the more you correct it. And to embody it is truly to, it's to live it. <laughs>